he is risen. And so I love this account uh, and I sympathize with John. This is written by John, of course. You all know that John's Gospel, uh, he describes himself as the other disciple. But that's him. That's John. And he describes here how he and Peter ran to the tomb. When Mary came and told them that, that, they didn't, that she'd gone to the tomb and she didn't know where, where Jesus was, so Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. It's very competitive. He says, look, we started together. We oh set off at the same time. Both were running, but the other disciple, that is me, that is John, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. I was quicker than him. He bent over, looked at the strips of linen that were lying there and did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, wants to stress that, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other, finally, the other disciple, who'd reached the tomb first, just to remind you, I was there first, also went inside. He saw and believed. Peter didn't get it, I got it. I was the one who saw and believed. Why did he believe? Because the tomb was not empty. The grave clothes were still there. He knew that if a robber had taken the body, he'd have taken the grave clothes. But the grave clothes had collapsed like a caterpillar's cocoon when the butterflies emerged. And the headpiece had been folded up and put in a separate place. There was no other explanation than that Jesus had risen. He saw and believed. That was the first thing. The absence of Jesus' body from the tomb. And the garden too. The tomb of Jesus. Here's the second thing. Jesus appeared to the disciples. The first person he appeared to was Mary from Magdala. That's what her name, Mary Magdala. She's the one who Jesus had cast out seven demons from her. She was a wealthy woman who supported Jesus in his ministry. And she was there at the cross and she was there at the tomb. Isn't it interesting that it was women who stayed at the cross. The men ran and the women stayed. Why did they stay? Well, possibly because they were more courageous than the men, or possibly because they were less likely to be arrested. We don't know. <laughs> but whatever it was, they, Mary was there at the crucifixion and she was the first witness 
to the resurrection. And Jesus appeared to her in the garden as we, we read on in this story. In John 20 verse 10. When the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. She turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. We don't know exactly where Jesus was buried. Because every other great religious leader, the moment they died, they marked the place. But the early Christians didn't care where Jesus had been buried because he wasn't there any longer. Why would they venerate a tomb? It was until about 300 years later before they started to venerate the tomb and to start to look for it. Because their whole emphasis was not on where Jesus had been buried, but the fact that he was alive and living in them. And that they wanted to take that message outward. They weren't looking back, they were looking forward. They were going out with Jesus. And it's the same for us. Isn't it amazing to be today? Easter day. Jesus is not in the tomb. He is risen. He's ascended. And he said, it's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I go away, I will send my spirit. I will come and live within you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. And today, where is Jesus? He's here. By his spirit. We sense his presence. What a sense of peace there is in this place today. The presence of Jesus. But more than that, he lives in you by his spirit. And Paul writes, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, how much more will he give life to your mortal body through his spirit that lives in you. Here's the good news. What happened to Jesus will happen to you. When a body's buried, it looks like the end. And it would be the end if Jesus' body was still there. But Jesus' body is not still there. He has risen. And that means that one day you too will rise. You have eternal life. And that means your life has a purpose. That means that you are loved. That God exists and he loves you. And that Jesus is alive and his spirit lives you. This is the best news in the world. The most loving thing we can do is tell the whole world that this day is a very happy Easter. Happy Amen. Easter. Amen. Amen. Yes. I want to pray a prayer. I want to pray a prayer that anyone here who says, I'm not sure I've ever experienced that. This, what a wonderful day to encounter Jesus for the first time, if you never have, or to be sure that you really have. Jesus is alive. He's here. You can speak to him. Here's a prayer that you can pray in the silence of your heart. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that you are not still in a grave, in a tomb, but you are risen. And today, I want to encounter you. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for anything I have done. I turn from the bad stuff and today I put my trust in you. And everyone can pray this. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come today and fill me 
or if you've already asked him before, to refill me with your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill me today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The garden too. We are heading to the place of the skull at the garden too where Jesus was crucified. The place of the skull. Oh Gogoda. Gogoda. station at Golgotha at the garden too thank you so much good people for watching I appreciate you and I'll see you again in a few days time it's Veronica happy Easter to you good people and God bless you thank you so much for watching <laughs> It's right called a sabre. Sabre. Okay. Yes. Sabre. You want me here, Hannah? Yes. Ah, yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.